Welcome back to the channel. Today, I got a 2020, yeah, this is 2020, Ram 3500 Dually Bighorn with a high output Cummins. As you can see behind it, I have a trailer, so you know what that means. I mean, we're gonna be doing some towing today with this bad boy. High output Cummins is what I have. However, this one may be different. Let's take a look at the window sticker really quickly. So here is the window sticker. As you guys know, if you get a Ram diesel or gas, it comes standard with a 373 axle ratio. You can upgrade to a 410, which this one has for 145. And this does have the high output Cummins at 11,795. Really quickly, be sure to subscribe to JV Reviews and make sure you have those bell notifications on. And be sure to check out my other channel, Attainable Exotic Cars. Now let's get back to the video. So as you guys can see, this bad boy has the 410 axle. That's the only difference about mine. I wish Hitch the Horsepower, AKA Robert Poe was here so we could do this video together because he has a 450 and I want to do a drag race with my trailer against him and his 450. But unfortunately, the way things work out, I had to do this video today because I don't know how long the truck's gonna be there because there's a shortage of trucks. So if you're in the market, be sure to check out Tate here in Chrysler. They have a lot of trucks right now and they're actually really good this truck only has like 8600 miles on it so as i said we're going to go through it real quickly i'm going to hook up my trailer to it we're going to get down the road on some six percent grade before traffic gets too heavy let's get started before you tow any trailer you obviously have to know what your numbers are Six thousand pound gross axle weight rating up front your rear gross axle weight rating is 9750 14 000 pound gvwr and as you guys can see here this truck has a 5,330 pound payload. Now my trailer is not gonna be an issue with this truck because it's only about 9,000 pounds in that ballpark. And it probably only puts about 1,000 pounds of tongue weight. I did get a new car, it's an Audi R8. Be sure to check out my new channel. Let's go ahead and take a look at the features inside and then I'll show you guys the hardware out back. Alrighty. So you already can kind of see the tow mirrors already out tow mode and as far as your mirrors go too you can close these through power and if you get a toy technology package you can actually control that small convex mirror there and then that way you don't have to do it with your hands as far as your system goes here you do have a backup camera you can zoom in to your hitch your conventional hitch and they also have a camera above your bed however this has a cover over so if you're hooking up a fifth wheel you can see that too and because this is a diesel you do have a diesel exhaust brake tow haul mode we are going to be using those two items today trailer brakes right there let's go ahead and go through the system here settings and we're going to find trailer brake and your current trailer we're going to see where it's at light electric we'll name this our car trailer because it's towing a car right now and that way we can go ahead and have this ready to go for the system. Now you can add or reduce your brake um, response from your trailer by hitting the plus or minus. So we want to be about five and a half or so in that ballpark. This truck was optioned too with the auxiliaries too. I don't know if you guys can see them down here, but you have your auxiliaries and you can hook up lights and things like that on the truck and then push the buttons down here to turn them on and off. Out back, you do have a class five receiving hitch, two and a half inch opening for this. And you do have a four pin and a seven pin connector. I like that they put a light bar down here. And that's because of the wide hips, because of how wide this truck is. Now this truck was optioned with the fifth wheel prep package. So it's gonna have a seven and a four pin connector inside the bed. This bed covers through Tiger. You don't have to open it to shut the tailgate. So I like that one. So, all right, so let's go ahead and get the hitch installed and we'll go ahead and back up the truck. It is 91 degrees outside, guys. All right, let's see what we got. All right, gotta scoot over just a little bit. We should be right there. You can turn off the rear parking sensors if you like. We're gonna zoom in. All right, let's see. I'm a little bit off, but I'm just turning the steering wheel just a little bit to get it right under. There we go. Should be right there. You do have a mechanical emergency brake. 
And what I'm going to do is, I'm going to go ahead and measure for you guys. And then that way, we can see how much this bad boy is going to squat. It's probably not going to squat much because this is only a thousand pounds. So you have these bump stops here. I'm hoping we can make contact with them. And as you guys just saw here, this has a little rubber piece too that can make contact. That's for those 3,000 and more pounds of pin weight though. That's gonna really make that bad boy squat. And then that additional leaf there is gonna make contact for sure. But let's go ahead and measure and we're gonna drop the trailer down. So the first measurement is gonna be 42 and 1 8. The truck didn't even drop. It's not even level. It just still has a little bit of rake in the back. And I'm not surprised. I mean, this is not a lot of, you know, weight on the hitch. So it looks like, it looks like this bump stop, ah, not really. It didn't really make contact. That one definitely didn't make contact. That one didn't make contact at all. So you're gonna need like probably 3,000 pounds for this truck to really start to notice that weight back there. The second measurement is gonna be 40 and a half. Check this out. So blind spot alert shows you this. So I'm gonna hit conventional blind spot alert with trailer on. It like it turned on tow haul mode for me. So I have to just turn on the exhaust brake. I'm going to hit tow haul mode anyway. Let's see what happens. Actually, no. That auto is for the um, blind spot, but you still have to turn on tow haul mode down there. So you can kind of see it right there. So let's go ahead and pull forward just a little bit. I'm going to pull the trailer brake. Yeah, six is probably where I'm at. My trailer's getting older now. All this towing I'm doing, my brakes are wearing down. <laughs> All right, we're gonna get on the road and we're gonna see what this bad boy's gonna do. This is gonna be a very important video for me because I don't think I've ever towed with a 410 dually from Ram yet. Maybe I have, actually I think I have. I just don't remember. I've towed with so many different trucks. But those dual rear wheels, man, I tell you, this is gonna be too easy. I'm probably gonna need a dually for my next truck. I don't know, don't, don't hold me to it, but the more and more I tow with them, the more and more I really enjoy the stability that they have. I mean, I, I genuinely cannot feel my trailer like at all. That's just insane. Yeah, 410 does make a slight difference on the accelerators, I can tell. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. And just having this diesel exhaust brake, I did a video earlier today with a Ram 2500 Hemi. It's no comparison, I mean, you just, you have a lot of negatives for the Cummins or, or any modern day diesel but I'm willing to live with those issues because of the fact that these trucks just have such a great performing engine and with the diesel exhaust brake the acceleration I mean it's just groundbreakingly good and with this being the dually having that 410 you just have max performance for towing all that good stuff and the payload number is big this is really the truck I mean I know that it's a no-brainer it's a dually tow but when you have a chance to really do these tests a lot of guys haven't towed with the dually yet so they only can they, they assume that it's gonna be better but when you get behind the wheel of one you're like it's like a minivan like women don't want a minivan until they get inside we're like I need a minivan this is so easy when you have kids it's the same thing when you're towing a trailer like you just when you have kids you need a minivan because it's just so much easier with the car seats but just how easy it is to open and close the doors things like that so yeah this is I can turn around right now this is a 
pointless task. Pointless. I need a 20,000 pound two car trailer, 48 foot, and I need to load it up with some heavy cars, two charger Hellcats, red eyes. And in that way, I'll have some weight on it, and in that way, this truck will actually be put to the test. But something like this, it's nothing. I have to figure out if I need to get a bigger trailer. I need to get a bigger trailer. Subscribe to my channel. Maybe I'll get a bigger trailer and get some heavy equipment if we start doing that. All right, let's take a look at your tires here. These are going to be these Nexen Rodian HTX. And these are going to be an LT23580-17. Your capacities are right here. I don't normally show you guys the kilograms, but hopefully you guys can see it. I do have some Canadian followers, so I'll show that to you guys also. But 3,085 pounds or 1,400 kilograms for your single. Dual option is going to be 2,835 pounds or 1,285 kilograms. But all in all, 80 PSI's cold. And I do notice that these front tires have definitely worn in comparison with your rears so I would probably update these tires sooner than later just because I mean there is a little bit more weight on the front of this truck and it looks like they're eating away at these with only 8,000 miles so just something to consider all right hitch to horsepower if you're watching this video I'm not gonna lie to you buddy I think that this this truck might tow as good as the F450 and I think that the F450 is such an overbuilt truck that I think it's too overbuilt. I think that the wheel and tires are just too much for that platform, if that makes sense. Like, I mean, you have a cabin chassis, and you have a little bit slightly bigger truck, you know, bigger frame, and you put a dump bed on it or whatever you have to do. So that extra weight allows for that truck to make more sense. But man, like now that I'm towing with this truck here, I feel like these smaller wheel and tire setups are better. Like I was thinking like in the future I would upgrade if I got a dual and get the 19 and a half. I would just stay at this size here and just get beefier tires. Because I really feel that these Nexen tires are just doing the job right now. They're just there's a lot of control. I feel really secure. Like this is so good. Like this is the best truck to tow with right here. We're about to get to the grade here in a little bit. I have to make sure there's no one behind me. I'm gonna slow down. I mean this is too easy guys. Too easy. Too easy. Here we go. I'm slow down to about. Let's see. Right here. All right, let's go. I think it went one mile an hour better than my 373 single rear wheel truck. And the uh, F450, that's where it shines. It has that 430 rear. And that truck just accelerates past 84, 85 miles an hour with no problem. You just have to hit the brakes at some point because it's going too fast. But all in all, I mean, this truck still performed well. I mean, it got up to speed pretty quickly. Um, having less gears too. The F450 has a beat there. So once Ram updates that transmission to an eight speed or whatever they plan on doing, 10 speed, nine speed, I think that would help too with the acceleration. The Eyes is not built for fast acceleration like the Ford and the Chevy's 10 speed. It's just, it's just outdated in comparison. And I think once they fix that one small issue, this will be a better performing truck all the way around. But as far as handling goes, there's 
there's no such thing as swaying this truck. I mean, I almost want to like go get my fifth wheel today and tow it with this. Like, I, I, I almost I'm willing to bet that I have just enough weight on my trailer right now that it would probably get it to squat more. But I don't know. I mean, this is this is really really like surprising for me. Like, yeah, I may have to start really looking into doing these. Like. Like right now, like you see, right now, I'm having to hit my brakes really hard. My exhaust brake's doing the rest, but I mean, if you're in a situation where you have to slam on the brakes, like traffic just stopped for no reason right now. It's the middle of the day, you know? And it's Saturday. I mean, this is a very, you know, slow traffic day for the most part, around 1140. And the traffic builds up, and if you're not paying attention, you look up, you have to hit the brakes. Having this overbuilt truck like this over a single rear wheel or even a half ton is what you're gonna want especially when you have a strong exhaust brake like this just saying just something to think about i do believe that this truck might be as good as the f450 i mean this truck in comparison i mean you don't have a 430 you have a 410 that's the only thing available you have to go up to a actual cabin chassis to get you know a higher axle ratio but I do find that this truck does have just as much control. I mean, the rear suspension is way overbuilt in comparison with the F-452. Um, I want to say that the leaf spring pack in the rear is the same as the F-350 on the F-450. But you lose a lot of payload with the F-450 because of the heavier, wider front track, you know, and with those larger wheels and tires. So I do believe that if you want to tow a bigger trailer, you have to choose this truck. That's why I think Ram hasn't really built a Ram 4500 with a bed, you know, and kept the GVW at 14,000 pounds. Now, if Ford can somehow get around that 14,000 pound and get to like 14,008, then the conversation would really be F450 all day long. But I do think that this truck is all you would need, really. I mean, this is a crazily overbuilt truck. I mean, I literally cannot feel my trailer back there. I mean, it is still back there too. I mean, I had, I did check a couple times. I mean, to be completely honest, I checked because I don't feel it. And it's because of how well this truck is built. They do make towing a huge priority with their brand. I mean, I think Ram is the best towing truck out there. And I mean, GM has really stepped up too. I can't knock them because I have not towed what they dually from them yet. So hopefully in time, someone will trade one in and I can get a video in on those too. But right now, I think that this might be just as good as the F450. Under the hood of this 3500, you do have the high output Cummins. It is made to a six speed Eisen transmission. One way you can tell this is a high output is, is if you have your dipstick for your transmission on this side. If it was the standard Cummins, it would be a 68 RFE and it would be on this side. Another way that you can tell if this is a high output is if you go out to the back of the truck, as long as the truck does not have air suspension, you see how you have these overload leaf springs here? The standard Cummins dually will have those overload leaf springs, okay? But if it's a high output, they give you this additional leaf spring right here. I don't know if you can see it, right here. And that's how you know if the truck is a high output too, because the standard Cummins does not have that additional leaf spring. All right, here we go. Actually, let me wait. The wide load coming through. test now is can it outperform the Ford F450 MPG that's the true test so we're gonna set it at 70 miles an hour like I did earlier all right and we'll put it on automatic too for the diesel exhaust brake so it doesn't mess us up here we may have to go a little bit faster just because of this truck yeah, I'm gonna have to go faster. All right, here are your temperatures. I forgot to do this in my last video. I completely forgot about it. But 
195, 170, and 195. So pretty good. I mean, that's about what you expect for these types of trucks. I mean, the transmission doesn't really get that hot. I mean, mine stays around 167, 168. But because it being almost 100 degrees today, that's going to make a huge difference. And But cooling and oil temperature is about what mine are always at. And check this out. We're at 11 and a half MPG. So I'm almost three miles per gallon better. I'm over three miles per gallon better than a Hemi that I did today. So just keep that in mind. So right now I'm getting 10.2 MPG, but I've been doing about 75, 80 because I'm in the left lane. I'm not gonna drive slow because I don't want to hold cars up obviously, but I'm still getting 10.3. The gas truck I did today, I was going 70 the entire way and I only got, what was it, 8.1 when I finished off. And I already beat that by over two miles a gallon now. So, you know, figure when you're traveling, you're gonna stop a lot more for fuel when you have a gas engine in comparison with this bad boy. I mean, this thing can easily get, you know, 12, 13 MPG with this type of trailer. I mean, assuming you're not climbing grades all the time, but even if that's the case with the gas, you're gonna be getting probably still two to three miles per gallon less if you're climbing. So having that diesel exhaust brake, having that extra torque, and just having just that extra weight on the truck do work together well to give you the best towing experience. Here's why most people buy Ram trucks to tow. That's why right there. I'm not even close to where I need to be at. But yeah, that diesel exhaust brake is insanity. But we pretty much are at our stopping point. I'll show you guys the MPG one last time, but we're at 11.6. Drove about 11 and a half miles. And like I said, I was driving a little bit fast. I was basically driving a mile a minute. So just to give you perspective there. I've been putting off buying a dually for a long time. I may have to really think long and hard about my next purchase. I'm not looking to buy anything anytime soon until they redesign this truck, but unless they come up with a uh, different transmission, I may consider buying that one too. But this was such a treat to do. Like I've towed with dualies in the past, not this particular one, but every time I get behind the wheel of a dually, I always am reminded of why you should definitely have one in your arsenal. I mean, this is a pretty big trailer, but any single rear wheel, three quarter ton, one ton could easily tow this with no problem. That Hemi I just told with was the example of that. But if I did get a larger, you know, trailer, I would like to see how well these trucks would tow. I mean, this really did a good job today. Like, I'm really impressed by this particular truck. The suspension, the power, the transmission. I mean, everything just works together really well. So if you're in the market, be sure to check out Tate Chrysler here in Frederick, Maryland. They have a huge selection of trucks and they have a location in Glen Burnie also. But thank you for your time and for watching this video. I hope it was helpful. Be sure to subscribe to my channel, like this video, and I'll see you guys soon. Since you stayed to the end, I'm going to see if that overload leaf spring is going to move. I'm going to go ahead and lift the weight off the truck, and like I said, I'll do a time lapse for this, okay?